the most wonderful time of the year. Hey folks, it's Chef Stephen Allen here and I am in my happy place out in the woods in my favorite time of year for foraging. I have to tell you, this is my favorite time of year and this year is exceptional for mushrooms. Uh, the weather gods uh, connected with one another and made for an incredible season of fall mushrooms. So let's take a quick walk and I'm gonna show you some wonderful things. Let's see what we can find. So I've come across these gorgeous orange mushrooms. This is a Lactaria species. So you find them under pine. So like this bad boy here. And if you can't tell by the bark, then you look for these needles. So find yourself a pine forest this time of year, and then you'll come across these. So this is a Lactaria species. This one's a little older, but this one is prime. So this is called Lactarius deliciosus, and they truly are delicious. And one of the reasons they're called Lactarius, if you think of Lactarius, you may think in your head lactate. And because of that, they are a milk cap. These milk cap mushrooms, if you cut them, you will see that a milky fluid will come out of it. So we'll touch it right here. And then you can see this orange milky fluid. There are lots of different Lactarius mushrooms. One of my favorites is the Lactarius indigo. And that one is a bright purple. I'll show you some pictures here because I found some a few days ago and hopefully we find some on our walk today. But when you cut those open, they bleed blue. By the way, folks, this is not intended to be a definitive field guide for these mushrooms. So you really have to be careful when heading out into the woods and foraging for mushrooms. And uh, make sure you get a good field guide. You can cross-reference with a couple of things. Uh, there's a couple of good apps out there. have an app that you're using I would cross-reference uh, everything you do with your field guides and then join a couple of uh, online mushroom groups I've just come across a nice little flush of gem studded puffballs but I am too late they would have been good a week or so ago and if they were white uh, on the inside which they're not you can see the spores coming out of it as I press it one in the woods here. Okay. This one. Oh, there's a couple in here. I was trying not to kill myself. Okay, these yellow ones are the chicken fat mushroom. Also known, or I should say also known as chicken fat mushroom, but its real name is Swillus americanus. So it is uh, a Boletus mushroom. And the family that it's in is Swillus. Swillus uh, pertaining to a number of things, but particularly when you find a Swillus, you'll know because they are slimy on top. So this mushroom, I like this one. Um, some people uh, will say it's kind of generic, bland kind of flavor. And I've read that some people will actually have an issue with dermatitis, some sort of uh, like skin issues and when they touch it and stuff, but I've never heard of anyone. I don't know anyone who um, has that issue. And I see lots of them now. So I think I'm gonna pick some. The pores, as opposed to gills on the bottom. And when you rip one open, let's rip one open here and show you what it looks like inside. Beautiful creamy flesh. that I'm in is 
one of my spots I go for giant puffballs. And the last couple of years were okay for puffballs. Uh, about three or four years ago, some of you may have seen one of my first videos I ever made with my daughter when she was younger. And we collected dozens and dozens, which I handed out to friends, family, and other uh, chefs that I know. <clears throat> that year was crazy. One spot that I typically go, not this spot, probably held about two, 300 beautiful puffballs. The reason I bring this up is because along my walk here, I've come across some fantastic ones and they look huge. I can see them through the woods. Let me show you what I'm seeing. Let's grab my basket here. And let's see if any of these are prime or not. They're actually not looking bad. They don't look like they're overripe. So let's check this smaller one out. And when I say smaller, the one here that is the size of a soccer ball. So how do we tell if these things are overripe or not? So let's, let's feel this. Now it's starting to turn brown on the outside, which is a little bit of an indication for me. I bet you if I peel this off, it'll look a little yellowish inside. It's just starting to turn, see? This yellowish. If they're like that, you do not want to pick them. They're not poisonous by any means, but they're just kind of disgusting. So what you're looking for is when you split one open, is for it to look like this. And you can almost feel when they're good or not. Uh, this one's looking a little yellowish. Yeah, it's a little, like, see my finger? I can press it in a little. And the thing about, let's say, destroying this one right now, it's getting yellow. Here we go. It's yellow inside. You'd never want to eat this one. But the thing about this, this is where all the spores come from. So destroying this mushroom and just leaving it here is going to do exactly what it would have done in the wild anyway. Now, this one here is looking the same. I'm going to guess, yeah, I feel that it's soft, but I see a couple in here that look beautifully white. There's no coloration on them. And let's see if they're firm or not. Okay, watch this. I press it and it doesn't really give. If I press really hard, of course, my finger's gonna go through that. But these two are perfect. So I'm gonna take them home. Just for reference, let me show you how big these things are. So these are not even that big, actually. Let me find a bigger one. Now these mushrooms, uh, they're very delicate in flavor. And when you cook them, it's almost like cooking a marshmallow. That's what they feel like. And so they will almost accept whatever medium you're using to cook it with. So for instance, if it's garlic butter, then they're gonna taste garlic buttery. Um, those lactarius that we found, they are much more delicious. When you saute them up in a little olive oil or butter or something like that, they have their really own distinct, real umami, mushroomy flavor to them. These not so much, but there's some great things you can do with them. You peel it, you get it all white, you slice it about a half an inch to an inch thick, and you use it instead of noodles for making a lasagna. So if you found three or four of these and you ended up with, let's say 15, 20 sheets of this mushroom, you could make a vegan and gluten-free lasagna by layering this raw with your tomato sauce or whatever sauce you want, baking it like a lasagna, and when it cooks, it will compress a little bit, and you'll end up with a lasagna with no noodles in it. Now, if this one weren't a little overripe, this would be all I'd need to take home. But it's just a touch. If I got to it two days ago, I think it would have been fine. Oh, look at this thing, this is ridiculous. A lot of people say never to wash your mushrooms as they will soak up water like a sponge. That is somewhat true, but how do you get mushrooms like this that typically have a lot of these pine needles that are sort of stuck in them 
How do you get them off? Well, let me show you a quick way of doing it and um, a quick way of drying them. Now you have to remember, if you're out mushroom hunting after a rain, they get soaked for hours upon hours in a torrential downpour, which is typically the time when mushrooms flush this time of year. The water itself will evaporate and they will just be perfect to eat. So why don't we do the same sort of process that you would see in the woods when it rains. But this time we're gonna get all of this off of the mushrooms. So after only maybe 20 minutes, they're already dry. Nice and dry. And let me show you how you clean these ones up. Okay, so these are the Lactarius indigo that I talked about. And I'm gonna show you how to clean them up, okay? So I actually like to cut a little bit off of the rim here. And look at this color, look how vibrant it is. Okay, so I'll take the gills like this and I'll actually cut down into them and cut most of the gills off. You can leave a little bit, that's fine. Isn't the color crazy? How about my cameraman? What do you think, my cameraman? Crazy color? Crazy color. Okay. I'm gonna clean that up, make sure that there's no holes here where there's bugs. That's the front side, it's all been washed off. And then I'm gonna cut them like this. And then they can be sauteed just like any other mushroom. These are delicious. Folks, thanks for joining me on my walk through the woods of Southern Ontario in the fall. You may have noticed the couple of outfit changes. So this really wasn't my one day, half hour in the woods. I found so many that first day that it excited me enough to get out to a couple of my other spots. And quite frankly, I found a ton of things. I'm going to say that I probably found a good 20 to 25 edible species and many that weren't. So I can't really add all of the videos into this little production of mine. So. You will have seen some of the videos and interspersed will be a number or have been a number of my other finds in photo form. Folks, get out here yourselves, take the family, go for a lovely walk. Be 100% certain of what you're picking and it will make the walk so much more enjoyable when you come home with something that you can eat. If you haven't subscribed to my page already, please do so, I would appreciate that pass along to friends and family and uh, we'll see you next time.